We're now going to create our first migration, and this is going to be the users table. So our migration is going to contain all of the information for a user, because in the next step, we're going to actually be registering a user. So we're going to be inserting data into this table. So over in our app, then let's close everything off that we don't need. And let's find out where our migrations live. So under database here, you can see this migrations table. We deleted the base migrations uh, that Laravel gives us initially, so we can create our own here. So I'm going to open up my terminal window. I'm currently SSH'd into my virtual machine, and I'm obviously within this chatty directory where my Laravel files are. So before we actually get started creating a migration, we actually need to set up our environment variables for our database host, our database, our username, and our password. Now my host can stay at localhost because I'm just working within my virtual machine and my database name needs changing. You could see that was chatty. Obviously yours might be different. And our database username is homestead and secret by default on a homestead box. So you may need to change this if you're not using homestead, but otherwise you can keep these as they are. So over in our terminal then, we can actually generate this migration. So I'm gonna say php artisan make colon migration and then I'm going to give the migration name so I'm just going to call this create users table I'm going to hit enter and that's going to create that migration for us so that's been created there we can see that that's all set up ready to go so if you don't know what migration is when we uh, run this this will create our database table in up and then down is the kind of rollback state or the reverse of the migration. So in that case, it would delete our database. If you were ever adding a field or adding a column to your database table, down would just be the opposite of what you're doing. In that case, it would remove the column. So what we're going to do is use Laravel Schema Builder, and we're going to create a table called Users. And then we have a callback just here. And inside of here, we have blueprint uh, type hinted table here and we're going to say table increments to start us off with an ID. All this will do is create an increment field called ID and you may have seen this before when you set up a, a database table. So next we're going to say table string and that's going to be an email. By the way, I'm not going to be creating relationships between the tables at the moment, uh, but you can go ahead and do that if you if you really want to. So the email field is just uh, a string. The username is also a string. We also have a password here. And we're going to create the first and last name here, but with a addition. And that is going to be that these are nullable. So there'll be nullable fields. We don't require a user to have a first name and a last name. We just require them to have a username, password, email, etc. So this is going to be the last name. Uh, we also have, remember, the location of the user. So we saw that in the first video when we updated our profile. Again, that's going to be uh, nullable too. And we also want a remember token. That's going to handle the remember me functionality when we sign in. And we also want the created at and updated at fields that Laravel's models work with. So we're going to say table timestamps. So under our down method, we just want to do a very simple line, schema drop users. And that's it. So when we bring our migrations up, we will create a table with all these columns. And if we wanted to roll them back or reset them, we would run this down method. So it's pretty simple to run these. We can keep an eye on our database as well. We'll have that new table in there when we refresh. So let's run our migration. So it's PHP artisan migrate, simple as that. And that's gonna go ahead and uh, create our migration for us. So it's also created a migrations table which just keeps track of our migrations. But we now have this users table in here with our email, username, password, and all the other fields that we specified. And you can check out the structure in here as well just to make sure everything's exactly as you need it. So that is our users migration successfully created. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can register users.